My name is Suzy, welcome to my channel. In October 2017, I got my third surgery for a relapse of pleomorphic adenoma. It's a benign tumor, but if left untreated, it might actually develop into a malignancy. Since this tumor is located near so many facial nerves, it's really tricky to remove without causing any damage, uh, such as facial paralysis. And of course, the more surgeries you do, the trickier it gets. Since the surgeries clearly were not enough to keep my tumor from spreading and growing, the amazing team of doctors that's taking care of me decided to opt for a combo of surgery and proton therapy. Proton therapy is a different type of radiotherapy. It uses a high energy beam of protons rather than high energy x-rays to deliver a dose of radiation. This means more precision, less side effects, and fewer chances of developing a malignancy down the road than with traditional radiotherapy, which is kind of cool. Yes, that is kind of cool. The reason is that protons are more efficient in delivering the radiation, so they preserve healthy tissues around the tumor. Um, there's a lot of science, a lot to explain, a lot of interesting facts actually. So if you're interested, I will make a video about this, but not today because this video is already long enough, trust me. Since unfortunately this therapy is not easily accessible to everyone yet, I thought it might be interesting to share my experience with you. Funny enough, <laughs> from proton therapy patient, I became a proton therapy treatment coordinator for international patients at the proton therapy center in Prague. Yes, that's another news. My husband and I moved to Prague and we're completely on our own now and we're being real adults. I want to see you actually eat with the fork <laughs> or not eat with the fork. Without further ado, whether it's just to feed your curiosity or because you're personally invested in this topic as well, today I'm gonna take you with me on a typical day of a proton therapy patient. Every day the treatment would happen at a different time and I was scheduled on a daily basis. For sure though, five days a week. For seven weeks. My husband and I would jump on the car and drive for 55 kilometers. If it was early in the morning, I typically took my coffee with me. Luckily, I have this giant American sized mug that saved me from burns multiple times, as Italian roads can get quite bumpy. Sometimes we saw rainbows. Sometimes we got stuck in traffic. Some other times we just enjoyed a smooth ride. If you're wondering what the heck is wrong with my attire, you can go over to my Instagram page and find out the reasoning behind my outfit. One to three hours later, depending on the traffic flow, we would get to Canal, the Hadron Therapy Center in Italy. <laughs> and we would go straight downstairs where the treatments are held. Since the synchrotron is a very complicated machine, sometimes it needs to get some work done so the appointments slide. Some other times, appointments slide because one of the patients can't stay still. Basically, there are three treatment rooms, but they only can operate one at a time. It's a very timed process. So if one bit doesn't exactly fit in place, it's going to affect the whole schedule. And it always bugged me so much that patients were so upset about this. And I understand you're sick, you don't wanna be waiting there for hours but it's no one's fault. Instead of just appreciating the fact that we were getting the treatment and there are people that cannot because they cannot afford it because their insurance doesn't cover it or they just don't have the opportunities, 
However, my husband and I would always find a way to keep ourselves entertained. I really, really enjoyed playing card games with them, especially when I was winning. And then when it was my time to go in for treatment, a personal number that was assigned to me popped on the screen in the waiting area and off I went. For the treatment, I had to wear comfortable clothes and slippers. And we had lockers and changing rooms available, but I just showed up already wearing my PJ. So basically, while on treatment, I lived wearing my PJ all day, which was pretty awesome, to be honest. Once a week, they would check the overall health and they would also wake me because you want to stay as close as possible to your initial weight because weight changes might change the tumor's position, which is definitely not good for such a precise procedure. And then my favorite bit of the day, my daily dose of Valium. Don't worry, I'm not an addict. I need my Valium. I want the Valium. I'm not an addict. The only reason why I used it is because during the treatment I just got so stressed that I started shaking and of course that was not good so I'm not taking it anymore though. I, I wish though. Sometimes I should. When the drug kicked in I would go into the treatment room. Since for obvious reasons I cannot take the camera in the room where I do the treatments. Actually they did let me take a video in the actual treatment room. However, I will save it for another video. So I guess you'll just have to come back. We are gonna do a little reenactment. So my husband is going to be a doctor. Since my tumor is in this area, I have a mask, which is not this one, of course. It looks way more scarier and it's way bigger. But for this reenactment, we're going to use this. I would lay on a hard bed and then the radiologist put a personalized hard mask on me. And then once everything is set, they start shooting protons. A funny thing is that the mask pressing so hard on my face in order to keep it extremely still would always leave me with a few extra freckles at the end of each treatment as the mask has holes on the nose to allow breathing. And then once I was done, I would follow the arrows back to the waiting area. before the treatment was scheduled every day at a different time so sometimes we would leave the clinic when it was already dark out also on Mondays I would see my therapist so we would most likely spend the whole day there so where did we eat super important question luckily enough there was an IKEA on the way so we occasionally stopped for some delicious Swedish meatballs colorful desserts and free coffee Some other times we would go to a pizzeria nearby and when it was too late we would just get takeaway pizza. Or we would pack our lunch and enjoy the nice weather outside. But the best of course was when we got to get home early enough to enjoy dinner with the entire family. <laughs> Thank you.
before going to bed, I had to do mouthwashes with baking soda and water to prevent ulcers and other radiotherapy side effects. I was supposed to do it after each meal, but I kind of forgot sometimes. In this clip, other than my husband being extremely silly, you can see me putting on a very specific cream, which I actually had to put on multiple times a day on the irradiated area because the skin was pretty rough. But the side effects are not all bad. For example, since I'm radioactive, when you turn off the light, I glow in the dark. I'm radioactive. <laughs> I glow in the dark. <laughs> This is not funny. I glow in the dark. This is way worse than one of my jokes. I glow in the dark. Yeah, way worse. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment down below. I would also love to thank my husband for driving me every single day and for spending so many hours in the waiting area with me and then waiting for me to be done with my treatment, always keeping my spirit up and my anxiety down. I would also love to thank my grandmother for always giving me her magazines to share at the clinic with other patients. And of course, thanks to everyone who loves me and supports me. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe because that makes me very, very happy. Bye. Both the records state that I'm not a willing participant. <laughs> this is gonna be deleted. Okay. Okay. Sis?